Robert FPV says, I bought the Flyfish RC Volador for my frame and was wondering if I don't use a GoPro, would the weight be fine? Um, Robert FPV, the weight is fine if you do use a GoPro. Many people don't mind a heavy quad the way that I do. I particularly dislike excessively heavy quads. That's my personal taste and not everybody agrees with me. Lots of people fly heavy quads and are fine with it and feel like there are advantages in terms of durability and they don't mind the trade-offs in terms of uh, in terms of handling. So if you bought that frame, don't sweat. Like, don't like I'm not going to tell you I don't care what this Bardwell guy says because you know then I would be out of a job. So I would like you to care what I say. <laughs> but um don't put don't don't think you have to agree with everything I say. Is I guess how I would put it. If you feel like you don't value a lightweight frame the way that I do, that's fine. You you know, if you go and you watch some, uh, some a movie critic and you know that this movie critic hates a certain type of movie that you love, then if he's reviewing a movie or a video game or whatever it is that, that you love and he hates, you're just not going to listen. You're going to be like, yeah, yeah, no, I like this guy's reviews, but I just can't listen to him when he reviews horror movies. So that's fine. Um, the Volador is a heavier frame than I would prefer, although I do enjoy flying my 8S Volador, and I see the benefit of that frame. If you don't use a GoPro, you're going to more than make up the difference in weight of, like, my typical daily driver. My typical daily driver comes in around 700 grams, maybe a little more, with a GoPro. That's with a GoPro Hero 8, not a GoPro Hero 9 or 10 or 11 or 12 or whatever. 700-ish grams, you could build a Volador and take the GoPro off and have it come in at about the same weight and it would fly great. You could put a GoPro on it and you could probably still be happy with how it flies, so don't sweat it. And Joseph Dahari, thanks for a $10 super chat. I am not an expert in yoga, that's for sure. Show us what you got. No, thank you. Uh, Volter Van Den, thank you for six euros. Recently got a Mobula 803. I really like it, except for the short flight time. Yeah, the flight time of that thing is short as hell. What's your thoughts on the new 85 millimeter whoop from Flywoo? Uh, well, it's an 85 millimeter with a naked 03, so it's going to be lighter. That's got to be better, uh, in terms of flight characteristics. It, it, it better have longer flight time and more agility and more power. The only question is going to be whether the 03. Uh, the Naked O3 has terrible durability. Um, Derek Lambert. If you've got the JBQAVS2 frame and you're direct mounting an O3 unit, um, uh, I, I mean, be careful about hard mounting it because if you tighten the screws too much, some people have said you can deform the case. I personally... Just, I don't hard mount the O3 or the Vista. I, per, I use tape uh, and zip ties, but uh, that's just me. Um, you might consider using some O-rings or nuts to make sure that you're, you're not squeezing the O3 in an unhealthy way. You could probably also get a 3D printed base, which we don't provide with the kit, but if you have a 3D printer, you could certainly do that. Thank you, Samuel Poulton, for another $2. Glad we were able to help you out. Um, cool Chicken says, I crashed my quad and now my HD0 is acting like it's pushing 25 watts. I think you mean 25 milliwatts. Oh, oh yeah. I'm certain I have it to push one kilowatt. No, you don't. <laughs> so um, just, just for the record, 25 milliwatts up to one watt is what its output is um no it's not firmware so guys there's a really really basic principle here that everybody needs to really internalize and that is crashing can't cause your firmware to mess up crashing can't cause your flight controller configuration to change crashing breaks your hardware so if you crash and now your video transmitter is outputting less power it's not your firmware. Don't fly, don't reflash it. You crashed and you broke your hardware. Check the antenna, etc. That kind of thing. 
Bad versus Evil wants to know, did they ever fix the issue with Betaflight with M10 chips? No, uh, that will be fixed in Betaflight 4.5 is what, what they're saying. It is not fixed in Betaflight 4.4. You still need to do the use center fix. Um, is Open IPC or Open HD worth it for the low price as an upgrade over analog despite the latency or does the latency make it unusable? Um, I mean, the price is low. Why don't you give it a try and report back to us? Yeah. Now I'm just, I'm not going to, I'm going to withhold, I'm going to hold my opinion. If anybody out there <laughs> wants to flash it and try it, be my guest. And you come back and you let us know how it goes. How about that? You might want to mention what the M10 fix is. I guess people don't know what that is. Sure. Yeah, so there's a problem where Betaflight 4.4 cannot do the auto configuration on the M10 GPS units, which means that they may only use one hertz update rate and they may not use the fastest baud rate. And the slower update rate may cause Betaflight's return to home to work badly. That's the short version. Normally, Betaflight auto configures the GPS to have a faster update rate and to work better. -er. Um, the GPS fix is here on iFlight's website, iFlightRC.eu. I'll put the link in the chat. And basically, it's a thing that you can do with a piece of software on your computer that manually configures the GPS to perform better since Betaflight 4.4 can't do it automatically. Um, let's see here. Mike Bergman wants to know, has anybody used a FreeSky 2.4 gigahertz whip antenna? Whip antenna. Say cool, cool. Say whip, whip. Say cool whip. Cool whip. Wheat dense. Um, has anybody used a 2.4 gigahertz whip antenna with Express LRS? Uh, no reason why you couldn't. It would probably give you great range because um, Express LRS has such great range. So Mike Bergman, I would go for it if you want to. <laughs> 